I was 16 when I decided never to have my own children. My official answer for anyone who asked was that children are too much work and they drive you crazy. Do we have any moms here can relate? <laughs> I learned this by observing my own mother, who was always anxious and overwhelmed. I wanted freedom. I wanted to live life on my own terms. Screw patriarchy, right? <laughs> my real secretive answer for not wanting to have my own children was that I hated my life and I hated myself. I didn't want to have a child like me, and I didn't want to bring another soul into this world to suffer. Sixteen was when I became severely depressed. Although looking back, I could see traces of my depressive tendencies from a very young age. I was a highly sensitive child and often had meltdowns. In today's terms, I was what we would call a neurodivergent. To be specific, I recently found out I'm autistic, but nobody knew back then. So I, was, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and back then, people like me were called what? Weirdos or drama queens. Life, <laughs> adolescence was hard for weirdos like me. My teachers and classmates were actually kind to me. But I was my biggest bully. I hit rock bottom when I was 20 years old. After years of struggle, I was now seeing a psychiatrist and battling suicidal thoughts every day. But I was a sneaky patient. I saved over 300 pills after just a few months. And then one day, I threw all the pills on my bed and had a serious conversation with myself. Should I take all these pills now? Or should I throw them away? I don't really want to die. I just don't want to live in pain anymore. I'm tired of feeling depressed, and I feel like a burden to mom and dad. They're probably better off without me. I didn't choose to be who I am. I didn't choose to be born. I can't fit in society. I can't manage my emotions. I don't know what my purpose is in this world. If we have free will, shouldn't I be free? to take my own life? What's the point of living if you can't feel joy anymore? So I asked myself with brutal honesty, I thought, there must be something that can still make me happy. If I don't judge my own desires, if there's absolutely no limit, what lights me up? What makes me look forward to getting up in the morning? And at that moment, I heard this tiny little voice in me, a very, very faint and timid voice that said, I want to go to music school. It was a voice I tried to dismiss and suppress many times in my life because I didn't understand it. I didn't know why I had that desire. And I didn't even know if I was good enough to go to music school. But I felt a little tingle when I visualized myself immersing in music every day. I was excited and terrified by that tingling sensation because I recognize that feeling. It's the sensation of being alive. 
after sitting in the stagnation and numbness of depression for four years, the feeling of hope and joy felt so foreign and precious, I clung to it. But my heart immediately sank because I didn't think my parents would be happy if I dropped out of the best university in Taiwan to go to music school. So in my suicidal mind, I carefully evaluated my options. If I don't follow my heart, I will stay miserable and probably end up killing myself. And that will hurt mom and dad. If I follow my heart, I will be happy. But first I have to break the news to mom and dad. And that will also hurt them. The last thing I want to do is to hurt mom and dad. But no matter what I do, there's no way around it. Would they prefer having a dead daughter who is perfect? Or would they prefer having a daughter who is alive but a huge disappointment? To be honest, at that moment, I'd rather be dead and perfect because it just seemed like the easier and the prettier option. But I thought, perhaps, just perhaps, my parents would prefer the other option. So I threw my pills away and told my parents about my big decision. They were shocked and they didn't understand it. But eventually they accepted and even supported my decision. And seven years later, I received my master's degree in music in the US and then accidentally started a handmade jewelry business. I'm wearing everything I made today. So as I grew older and a little wiser, life also got better and a little easier. My business grew organically and I was now living the American dream. People looked up to me and said I was successful. My parents were proud of me and I was proud of my shiny public image. For over two decades, nobody talked about my history of depression. My parents paid for my therapy so they knew I was depressed, but we never talked about how serious it was or how many times I thought about ending it all. Throughout my years of depression, I tried my best to hide my symptoms and despair from my parents because I didn't want them to worry about me. And now my old wounds have healed. I was happy. I had moved on and didn't feel the need to talk about my past anymore. But one night, when I was tossing and turning in bed, and random thoughts floated across my mind like they always did, it suddenly hit me that my big brother's daughter, Angel, was about to start middle school. Angel was like a mini-me. She looked like me. We liked the same food. We both loved arts and crafts. And like me, she also showed a hypersensitive personality from a young age. Because of this, I have been worrying for years that she would become depressed during her teens. My family still lives in Taiwan, and I don't see them very often. When I finally visited Angel again earlier this year, the sweet, bubbly girl I once remembered was now suddenly a shy and awkward teenager. She was almost as tall as me, and she was so shy, she wouldn't even take her mask off, even though there was no mask mandate anymore. I tried to talk to her to see where she was now with her mental health. But if you know teenagers, 
Or if you know how I once was, then you know how hard it is to get a 13-year-old to open their heart to you. Andrew didn't want to talk to me about anything until I was about to leave. But when she finally started talking, she told me everything I was afraid of. She told me she dreamed of becoming a writer, a psychologist, an artist when she grew up. The same dreams her aunt had during high school, by the way. But her parents suggested that she should become an engineer or a dentist so that she could have a stable life. Right? She said, I don't know why I can only write sad novels with no happy endings. I'm a burden to my mom and dad. They fight because of me. I'm not smart enough. I'm fat. My eyes are not symmetric. When she said her eyes are not symmetric, I completely lost it. I mean, I, am, I can assure you, this girl has the most loving parents. She's not fat, she's plenty smart, and her eyes are perfectly symmetric. Just imagine me being 30 years younger. She's perfectly fine. But she can't see it. She can't feel it. Her pain feels true to her, and I know exactly how she feels because I used to feel just like that. Nothing was good enough for me. Life was not good enough for me. I was not good enough for me. I did not become depressed because of trauma. I became depressed because I never loved myself. I felt as if I was watching my life being loved by another soul all over again. I felt hopeless and hated that I couldn't stop it from happening. I hated that I couldn't take her pain away from her. Why? Why did she feel like this? What can I say to make her see the truth? I couldn't even utter the word depression because I thought she was too young to know the word. But was she? And all I could say was, I will not allow you to walk down the same path I once did. She looked me dead in the eye and said nothing. She was probably shocked that her successful aunt was not who she imagined. Oh, she didn't cry. I did. And... I continued to talk to her with tears flowing, but she didn't know why I cried. I cried because she couldn't see her own beauty like I saw her. I, I didn't know my beauty at that age. I cried because she didn't know she was not a burden to her parents, just like I didn't know it at that age. I cried because she didn't know everything she thought was stopping her from following her heart was simply an invisible barrier and all she needed to do was to have the courage to walk across it. I cried because now I suddenly, I finally understood why I had to struggle for years to find the purpose of my life. Angel was the purpose I couldn't see when I was battling depression because she was yet to be born. I cried because now my suffering finally had a meaning. It was through my suffering and learning that I was able to guide her through the challenges in her life today. I cried because it hurt me so much to think what would have happened to my family had I taken those pills that day. 
angel didn't know why I cried because she was only 13. She didn't know how much she was loved, just like I didn't know how much I was loved. She didn't know this, but I was coming back for her. I may not be able to take her pain away from her, but I can hold her in and walk with her. I don't hate myself or my life anymore. And even though I don't have my own children today, I'm grateful to have a niece like me. <laughs>